The L's even in cursive, kind of. Whatever that is. Ooh. I mean, everybody has to start from somewhere, right? It kind of sucks. I'm being massaged in a Hyundai right now. Oh. I feel like I'm sitting on a marshmallow. These seats are so comfortable and soft, or like a Dr. Scholl's insert for your shoe. It's hard not to be impressed with Hyundai's dramatic turnaround, especially when you consider where they came from 30 years ago. A lot of people don't remember their first car came in 1986. It was just one model and it was called the Excel and it initially sold really well, but when people started driving them and they started braking constantly, uh, sales plummeted. Dealers, they gave up on the Hyundai franchise entirely and Hyundai could have gone down as the next American Yugo. Hyundai is a huge company that builds just about anything, so they could have walked away from the US market altogether but for some reason they were super stubborn and didn't give up. What eventually put Hyundai on the map was offering a huge warranty, 10 years or 100,000 miles, which was unheard of at the time, and quality of the cars steadily improved. By around the turn of the millennium, Hyundai wanted to get into the luxury car game, which seemed laughable, but they did it anyway, and this was their first real luxury car offering in the United States. In Korea, it was called the Hyundai Grandeur, but here, it was the Hyundai XG300. And later it was renamed the XG350 because it got a bigger engine, 3.5 liters, putting out 194 breathtaking horsepower. Yeah, it's, it's totally stupid to compare this to a Mercedes or a BMW around the new millennium, but keep in mind, this midsize Hyundai luxury car cost $25,000. That's really cheap, even back in 2003, that's super cheap for a luxury car, and it came with that 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. So if somebody had an aging Mercedes or BMW with a bunch of problems and they were spending thousands fixing it, that long warranty seemed really attractive. Now this XJ350 is special for multiple reasons. The first being it is the L edition for luxury. The L's even in cursive, kind of, or whatever that is. Ooh. And the luxury edition Hyundai XG350 came with things like heated memory seats, a sunroof, a rear cargo net for your trunk, and an eight disc CD changer, which was an outdated technology to have in the trunk in 2003. Really, if this car were built 10 years before in the early 90s, it would have been pretty impressive. It wouldn't have been too far behind Lexus or Infiniti's first offerings around the same time. But this car is a 2004. So this car is super underwhelming. It's not all that great to drive either, but it does have one remarkable thing going for it with this specific vehicle. It's amazing, actually. Okay, off in the XG. And what makes this XG350L super duper special is it only has 12,423 original miles on it. This car inspired this whole video idea because my friend was driving and he borrowed it from his mom when his truck was getting worked on by the wizard. And I saw this thing and went, holy crap, I haven't seen a nice one of these in years. And when I saw the odometer reading, I was shocked. Couldn't believe it. And other than the battery, everything is original in this car. The belts, the hoses, even the tires are Michelin and have a date code from 2004 when this car was built. It's astounding. It's a collector quality Hyundai XG350L. <laughs> but I don't think collectors are going to be seeking this car out anytime soon. It's not all that great. This interior is really cheap. It's basically Toyota Camry quality from the mid 90s, which that was a great car in the 90s, but certainly not for a 2000s luxury car. The wood is super fake looking, grown from the finest plastic trees. And these seats, while they're not bad, it's not all that great. The ride is okay. But one thing I can't get over, considering this thing has 194 horsepower, which isn't all that much, is the torque steer, which I'm gonna floor it now. Watch this, I'm gonna stop. <laughs> I veered so hard to the right. That's something you don't get in modern cars anymore. 
I mean, everybody has to start from somewhere, right? But this is a horrible, horrible start. I mean, my YouTube channel was off to a horrible, horrible start, too, if you look at those first videos. But I haven't improved nearly as much as Hyundai has. So this car isn't great. It certainly isn't. It isn't good either. It kind of sucks, but it was their first try, and it's not just totally awful. And the car that replaced it, the Hyundai Azera, is styled a bit nicer, and it is nicer in the interior, but still pretty underwhelming. It didn't make any headlines. But then there was Genesis. Out of nowhere, Hyundai launches a luxury car brand based on old school luxury car principles. A big V8 offered in a full-size sedan with rear wheel drive, something that was dying in the United States. The only one left really that was affordable American rear wheel drive V8 was the Crown Vic, the Mercury Grand Marquis, the Lincoln Town Car, the Panther platform, and that was all dying right around when the Hyundai Genesis came out. So this weird Korean brand that was total junk 10 years ago suddenly became a great replacement for a Lincoln Town Car. Who would have thought? Who would have thought it would have been the Koreans that built an old school luxury car that we don't really get anymore? But they kept going and they eventually brought their old flagship, the Equus, something they had offered in Korea for decades in other countries, but never in the United States. And that's what I bought, this 2013 Hyundai Equus. And if you saw my video that I made six months ago about it, you know that it does burnouts. It has a 429 horsepower V8. So the burnouts are strong, but even more impressive is the interior. It has a reclining rear seat with a massager, like it's a Brookstone massage chair and a refrigerator. I can't believe the video got 3 million views. It's, it's amazing because it completely pays for the car. And since I've had zero issues with it for the past six months, I basically have a free car right here. It's, it's incredible. Thank you for that. Now I'll admit the Equus does seem a little dated on the interior. The quality is lower, that of a Lexus maybe 10 years ago, but flash forward to 2019, that is certainly not the case anymore. Behold the 2019 Genesis G90 Ultimate. It's yummy. This is the latest flagship model from Hyundai, or now Genesis, and it's $73,000 according to the window sticker, which is a lot, but no longer is this car behind on the times. It is actually super impressive. The interior is amazing. Let's take it for a drive. Oh my goodness, this is amazing. I feel like I'm sitting on a marshmallow. These seats are so comfortable and soft, or like a Dr. Scholl's insert for your shoe. It's got that gelish, just super comfortable memory foam kind of thing going on. That is so good. I am a little bummed that they got rid of the rear seat. It does recline, but the footrest doesn't pop out like mine, and there's no more refrigerator, but still, it is really comfortable back there as well. And the interior is gorgeous and the clock is beautiful, but it looks way too much like a Breitling or a Bentley dial on their special watches, almost enough to where I'd be a little worried about a lawsuit. And unlike the XG350L and my Equus, this car has its own style presence. It actually looks like its own car and it's beautiful. Unlike the other two cars that are, I mean, vague and weird looking or okay looking, but a vague copy of a Mercedes or a Lexus and an Acura kind of all combined in one in the part of my Equus. This car looks like its own car, its own brand. Genesis is establishing itself as not a cheap copycat. But I mean, at this point, all luxury cars kind of look the same nowadays anyway, and they depreciate so quickly. You can buy a 10 year old Mercedes C or E class now for like five grand with a bunch of miles on it. So the badges really don't matter anymore. So when you're shopping, especially new, and you know you're gonna take all of that depreciation, this Hyundai is certainly worth a look. $70,000 is a lot of money, but if you compare this to an S560, which I know is a great car, it, it's not $50,000 less in here. It's, it's up there, it's really nice. And in 10 years, that $110,000 S-Class is going to be worth 10 grand, and this one will be worth about 10 grand as well. And 
you can see who comes out more ahead on this. Plus, you've had the warranty taking care of you the entire time. Mercedes doesn't do that. Also, keep in mind, there are cheaper versions of these big luxury Genesis sedans. You can get a G90 without the Ultimate Package and save yourself a bunch of money, or the G70, which is about Genesis size, the first Genesis, or a little bigger than that XG, and have a really nice, comfortable, old-school luxury car for pretty reasonable money. Most European and even American luxury cars are trying to be sporty. They're trying to impress automotive journalists with their big bolstery seats and tuned suspension so they can go around a track when really that's not what you're buying a luxury car to do. Genesis isn't trying to do that. They just deliver a really smooth, really quiet, super comfortable ride. And it's so nice that somebody is still building a car like this at an affordable price point. So I really dig this thing, but no, I didn't buy it. Hatchet Hyundai Genesis was kind enough to loan this to me, so you can check out this car that I drove there. They were super generous to loan it to me and uh, did not not give me permission to do burnouts, but still, I'm not going to do burnouts. I know it'll do it. It has the same 5-liter V8 as my Equus, but uh, since it's not mine, I'm not going to roast tires on a brand new car out of respect for whoever buys this thing. So you have to admit, the transformation of Hyundai and Genesis over the last decade or so is nothing but amazing. And now the cars are getting even more luxurious and Genesis is becoming a wholly different operation. Dealers are building their own Genesis facilities, but still Hyundai is like 10 years behind on the times because they offer three rear wheel drive sedans, but zero SUVs. But I think there's a new SUV coming out soon, which is good because then that'll secure the brand a little bit so they keep making these great old school luxury cars. Thank you for watching. Oh, it's like I'm just riding on a marshmallow cloud right now and just melting into the seat. It is so good. Oh.